I'm Laura Caulfield and welcome to Dialogue. I am here with Lisa Cole, winner of the screenwriting competition of the Ojai Film Festival for her screenplay Matadora. Welcome. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's really exciting to meet you. Um, your screenplay is, uh, you know, about the first female matador. Talk to me about the inspiration for the script. I um, I think it was about 20 years ago, actually. I saw this photograph of a female uh, bullfighter, mm -hmm. incredible young woman named Christina Sanchez. I just was really inspired by her, and she was beautiful, and I thought, what makes a woman want to bullfight? And it turns out it's really the same thing that makes men want to do it. So it's this reverence for this art and the beauty of the tradition. It's so incredible and, and beautiful, and there's a tapestry and artistry to it that's really um, inspiring and uh, the, to defy death in that way I mean I think being in the ring gives um, there's so much power to that and to face down this opponent that's literally a thousand over a thousand pounds and Christina was five feet two I think or five foot four she was this tiny beautiful little blonde with a braid and <laughs> it's is. interesting because I think it's also a metaphor for life today where yes. you know we are constantly in the ring, aren't we? We are always sort of doing this dance around the elephant in the room mm -hmm. that we, it, it's our own survival. So I think that that's really, really fascinating. So you... Well, and Brene Brown writes about that. Do you know the writer? Um, she writes about entering the ring and how so many times, not just for women, but also men, but we're fearful to um, enter the arena and be that brave. Um, with whatever it is in life. It's easier to um, sort of stay below the radar and never really hear your voice and never really find your, your calling. Um, it's easier to sort of stay in that fear. So entering the arena. So for me, there were a lot of metaphors that go beyond the bullfighting aspect too, um, of breaking down that glass ceiling of defying tradition and going right. up against a traditionally patriarchal thing and something men have only done, women have never done, should never do. And right. So and following your bliss and really yeah. listening to what your calling is and not letting anybody stand in your way of becoming all that you can really be. Yeah, and I think that women are really underrepresented in media um, in, in, in the sense of being portrayed authentically and realistically. There's plenty of um, stereotypes for women in films and television, but when you really um, take a look at what's still being produced today, I mean, I think it's changing now. Right, but, slowly. Um, yeah, but women are still really underrepresented when it comes to realistic portrayals of who we are and what we do and what our you know, dreams and desires are. Um, that still has a long way to go. So for me, writing about this um, is something inspiring in that sense that maybe can inspire a young person to not necessarily bullfight, but to just step into the ring, whatever that arena is. So my story is not necessarily about the first female, but it's set in the 20s during the Mexican Revolution, and it's about a young woman who um, really loves the, the... Her father was a bullfighter, and she really loves all aspects of it and really wants to do it, but is never allowed. And then her um, father is killed, and um, right. uh, she has to... Um, she takes it upon herself to save the family from ruin. Pepe saddles up his horse. Now I know why you don't have any kids. Look who's talking. Carlos limps over to them. Embarrassed, he scowls at his sister as she picks up his cape and gives it a whirl. You wish you could cape as good as me? <clears throat> My cow was caping you. Jose Rios, 48, Esperanza's tall, regal father, confronts Valdez, 50, a shrewd, dapper man, and his frothy, overweight lawyer, 40s. The offer is in your best interest, Jose. Valdez retrieves his hat from the coat rack. Maybe so, but it's not in my nature. I always admired your courage, but never realized it took the place of common sense. So the story's about family and tradition and land and love and, you know, death. And like, there's a lot of big themes in the, in the film. Right. It's pretty epic and it was, it's, it took me a long time to write and I have two uh, writing partners, Rick Nahara and Mark Monroe, who also helped um, a lot on, in different aspects of it. Thank you so much. It's such an honor to be here and to be selected. I want to thank the Ojai Film Festival and Rick Nahara and Mark Monroe, my co-writers who are award-winning, formidable writers in their own right for sure. But I did um, a lot of the legwork and research and uh, 
read a lot of things about it and um, and went to bullfights and I also took lessons so wow yeah I, I really wanted to know what it felt like and um, so I went to a border town and it was a weekend course and um, got to flourish the cape and learn the stance and learn different passes and and then they let us go in the ring with um, um, I think essentially a calf um, it was you know maybe 300 pounds right and we weren't still we weren't there to harm him or in any way or that wasn't gonna happen um, I didn't I would have never done that but right. just to know what it was like to even face down a calf at 300 pounds it was really intimidating oh I can only imagine <laughs> but what a great thing to conquer fear too what a great experience to say if I can face down this bull yeah and I can learn this can that how does that translate in my life it felt really good until um, until he stepped on my ankle and I came home pretty bruised. Yeah, <laughs> his little nubby horns. He had, they had, he just had little nubby horns. Maybe it was a she, I'm not sure. But she got me in the thigh and she uh, stepped on my ankle. And yeah, I had bruises for weeks, but it was, I was very proud of them. <laughs> right. Battle scars, well fought, well yeah, won. Yeah. yeah. So that's fantastic. Have you taken the project out anywhere? Have you set it up at a studio? What's going on with it? No, so the crazy thing is we actually wrote it, um, more than a decade ago and um, I think it was way ahead of its time in a way and also there weren't as many projects like Hollywood wasn't as open to um, Latino themed projects and this is a film that has a Latina Latina pr protagonist and it has an all Latino cast so diversity is so important now more than yes. ever um, with what's happening in our country and um, so okay. I think the time for the script is now so no to answer your question we really haven't gone anywhere with it I only showed it to a couple of producers that I knew personally then and they didn't necessarily get it you know um, so we kind of shelved it and I went on to work at VH1 and do other things and then um, for whatever reason um, I met someone recently who asked me what, uh, what other things I had written and uh, I just thought I'm gonna read that again and I read it again and I remembered why I loved it so much and I just on a whim submitted it here to this festival um, and was really surprised, frankly, when it won. Thank you for choosing a story like this because I think diversity, as we're seeing in our nation and in our world, stories about diversity are now more important than ever. And um, this is a fully Latina cast with a Latino protagonist. Um, it's a really empowering story and speaks to diversity in the film industry too because of the top grossing films last year. 10% were written by women and only 8% were directed by women. I think it's time to do better than that. Um, no offense, boys. <laughs> it's Gladiator meets Moana. That's kind of yes. what I've been thinking about lately. Like, what movies That's a great made? way to pitch it. Um, it's sort of that combination in a way. Right. Yeah. Um, well, I wish you a lot of success thanks. with it. So what are you writing next? Yeah, so I, I write women's stories. <laughs> I have another script with producer Laura Bickford who did Traffic and um, Fur and Che and a lot of movies, Beasts of No Nation. Um, so we're trying to set that up right now. Um, it's about a woman, it's called Girl Named Sue and it's actually a true story. It's like Aaron Brockovich uh, where a woman in Northern California works to save children from dangerous drug homes and it was set in the 90s during the crystal meth epidemic um, right. which is still ongoing but right. in her community in Oroville which is outside of Chico in Sacramento um, she became a cop on her free time you know and she um, convinced her boss to put her over in the task force with so she started going on drug raids with all men and um, wow. yeah awesome. and identified like there's children in all these homes and cops and social workers don't always communicate they don't necessarily trust one another even though they have the same clients. She saw this problem much differently than the guys did and said, you know, I have to do something about this. All right, well, you persevere and press on. You know, keep writing. Thanks. Keep doing that, mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah. Thanks.